This video was made possible by support from Sacred Rights, an initiative based at Northeastern University dedicated to public scholarship about religion, as well as our awesome patrons on Patreon. Over the past few decades, the United States has seen tremendous growth in a population commonly referred to as nuns. N-O-N-E-S. In other words, religiously unaffiliated people. The people who check the no religion box when asked what is your religion on a survey. Nuns is actually shorthand for a rich diversity of opinions. Everyone from people who say that they're spiritual but not religious, to people who identify as agnostic, humanist, or atheist. It's difficult to estimate the size of this population, but it is growing. In fact, Americans identifying with no religion has recently surpassed the share of evangelical Christians in the U.S. population, 23.1% of the population compared to 22.8% of the population. But the story of religiously unaffiliated people is way more than these statistics. For example, do they have beliefs? Do they have rituals? Do they have an alternative to theistic religious gatherings? These questions give us an opportunity to study a movement taking place over the past few decades. The rise of what religious studies scholar Dr. Anthony Penn calls churches for the godless. The rise of atheist, agnostic, and humanist alternatives to theistic religious gatherings. I wanted to learn more, so I traveled to Rice University to interview Dr. Penn myself. The, the title of this video is Church of the Godless. It's a kind of provocative title, uh, and I would love the audience to understand what do you mean by Church of the Godless? What is a Church of the Godless? What this idea of Church for the Godless really boils down to, what it gets at is a growing concern within humanist and atheist circles for an opportunity, a structure for relationships, ritualizing life, an opportunity to think through and celebrate high points of life and an opportunity to mourn with others the low points of life to, in essence, make life meaningful. So when Anthony and I use the term churches for the godless, we're not talking about non-dogmatic religious organizations like the Unitarian Universalist Association. This is an organization that got its start in the mid-20th century with a commitment to deeds, not creeds. In a UU church, you might see a diversity of opinions from people who are more Christian in their thinking to even atheists and humanists. We're rather thinking about services where people see value in spending a portion of their Sunday together. They see value in the fellowship and participating in ritualized behavior like singing or reading from an important text but services that more graphically capture godless thinking and religious unaffiliation. For example, let's start with Sunday Assembly. It was started in 2013 when two stand-up comedians from England decided to provide atheists with a way to celebrate life. For the founders, it was clear that atheists wanted community. So they started Sunday meetings that include songs and games and comedy routines, all sorts of activities that are meant to enhance life and community. Some people jokingly call it Pentecostal for atheists. There's no doctrine, there's no texts, and the leadership doesn't enforce any particular way of living. For many of you, it might make sense that Sunday Assembly might rise out of a secular place like the United Kingdom and would thrive in secular parts of the United States like major cities. But what about the Bible Belt? Well, on my trip to Houston, Anthony and I visited a humanist gathering called Houston Oasis. But it's not exactly in the mold of Sunday Assembly. Both Sunday Assembly and Houston Oasis provide a place for atheists, agnostics, and humanists to gather, but Houston Oasis is much more in the mold of what I would call humanism. But what do we mean by humanism? Now, from my understanding of the term humanism, it encompasses a lot. Uh, it encompasses what we might call atheism, agnosticism, non-religion, secularity. So how do you define humanism when you use that term? You're absolutely right. It's something of a fluid concept. But when I talk in terms of humanism, this is what I mean. I mean a philosophy of life without belief in God or gods that holds the human fully accountable and responsible for the conditions of life. It entails an ethics or a sense of what we ought to do in the world that doesn't assume any sort of external help. It's humans trying to make their way through the world in relationship 
to other forms of life. So humanism encompasses a broad range of people that don't believe in God, but rather than focusing on the existence of God, they focus on humanity as the center for meaning and responsibility in the world. Also, unlike Sunday Assembly, you're much less likely to find games or comedy routines at Houston Oasis meetings. In this respect, they're a little more similar to traditional church services, just without the scripture and the appeal to revelation. The meetings are comprised of discussions around what they call real-world principles. The guiding principles at Houston Oasis include an emphasis of people over belief and a commitment to human activity to solve the world's problems rather than an appeal to prayer or divine forces. But do Sunday Assembly and Houston Oasis represent religious communities? They gather on Sunday, they participate in ritualized communal behavior like singing, they have a shared identity, but is church the right term? Is religiosity the right term? So what's the, the religious studies angle here? Because we wouldn't necessarily call this religion, or would we? Like, this is kind of playing with this category. One of the things I find fascinating about uh, Houston Oasis and similar gatherings is that they force us to interrogate our language, to interrogate the kinds of assumptions that come into play in the study of religion. So, for example, we've tended to think about religion with respect to gods and God and the kind of doctrinal structures and structures of worship and creedal structures growing out of this. But there are other ways to think about religion. Right? And if you boil it down, religion is really about a binding together. It doesn't require God or gods. Right. So there's every reason to think about Houston Oasis or Sunday Assemblies as a godless religiosity. That is to say, an effort to make life meaningful, to kind of wrestle with the fundamental questions of our existence. Who are we? What are we? When are we? Why are we? Without a strict reliance on the scientific method, right? To kind of recognize there are other dimensions of who we are that are not fully captured through objective study. So Dr. Penn does argue that Houston Oasis could represent a form of godless religiosity. But just to be clear, this depends on you defining religiosity as wrestling with the fundamental questions of life and defining religiosity as having much more to do with communal behavior and communal identity than it does with belief in supernatural beings. Now, I don't have an easy answer to this question, but I do think that the existence of organizations like Houston Oasis should at least invite us to reevaluate what we mean when we say worship, ritual, or even church. Sunday Assembly and Houston Oasis are only two examples, but we should be paying more attention to this godless church movement, especially since religious unaffiliation in the United States is just becoming a bigger and bigger share of the population. This movement is coming at a particular moment in U.S. history in particular, where you have the rise of the so-called nuns, uh, N-O-N-E-S, uh, nuns, meaning the people that check the non-affiliated box in the question, what is your religion or your religious identity on a census? So could you speak to a little bit of this This speak to the, the to the rise of this new so-called nun identity and how this plays into this this movement sure it's fascinating so Houston Oasis is roughly a decade old but we've noticed for longer than a decade a shift in the religious sensibilities of the US population and we reached a point where it's undeniable that a growing percentage of the US population claims no particular religious affiliation none the nuns hmm. But this is an interesting population in that they have troubled our language about religion. So, for example, within this population, you'll get some who claim that they are spiritual but atheist. Hmm. That takes a little work, yeah, how does that yeah, work? yeah, to hold those together. Uh, and so what we've come to understand is that these are folks for whom traditional forms of religiosity, including belief in God, just don't work. Those forms don't work. But it doesn't mean they've given up a desire to be together, to recognize relationships, that even without God, they understand that life has wonder and awe. And they're developing alternate ways to express that. 
like Dr. Penn said, these are people for whom traditional religion just doesn't work for them. But just like millions of people around the world, these are still people that need to learn how to raise a kid, how to cope with a terminal illness, or try to make sense of burying a loved one. But these are people that still see value in community, in relationships, and even see value in ritual. This sort of research should complicate our thinking of categories like atheist, agnostic, and humanist. But to get a better sense of what Houston Oasis was all about, we wanted to talk with someone involved. Dr. Penn and I visited Houston Oasis and we interviewed one of their members to learn more. You can find the full interview on my second channel as well as my full interview with Dr. Penn in his office. As always, thanks so much for watching and subscribing, and I'll see you next time. But what I would say is that these sorts of developments in the United States are not geographically stifled. That is to say, they are not restricted to one area of the country, right? They're not restricted to those ultra liberal areas of the country that throughout the United States, you have these sorts of movements taking place.